the legendary oceanographer Jacques Cousteau called Cocos the most beautiful island in the world. We have dived at least 2,000 dives all over the world, but we haven't seen anything yet that compares to Cocos Island. For centuries, Cocos Island, a small island in the Pacific Ocean, about 340 miles from the shore of Costa Rica, has been shrouded by legends of buried treasure. Many stories have been drawn from history to explain the possibility of treasure on the island. Perhaps the greatest cache of treasure thought to be on Cocos Island is the treasure of Lima, containing a tremendous collection of gold, silver, and religious artifacts. Its position is the first point of contact with the northern, equatorial countercurrent and the myriad interactions between the island and the surrounding marine ecosystem make the area an ideal laboratory for the study of biological processes. The underwater world of the national park has become famous due to the attraction it holds for divers who rate it as one of the best places in the world to view large pelagic species of sharks, rays, tuna and dolphins. So what's the story of this mysterious island? How could this treasure have ended up on Cocos Island? And does anyone live there nowadays? And if so, which country owns it? Coco Island has been known to sailors and cartographers since the beginning of the 16th century. It was first mentioned as Ile de Coque in a map by Nicolas Delessines in 1541. The island appeared on other maps in various publications during the following centuries. The abundance of fresh water, wood, pigs, fish, and coconuts made this small island a favorite stopping place for pirates and whaling ships. The names of various boats carved into the rocks at Chatham Bay are reminders of these early visitors, some dating as far back as the 1600s. The best known of the treasure legends tied to the island is that of the treasure of Lima. In 1820, with the army of José de San Martín approaching Lima, Viceroy José de la Serna is supposed to have entrusted the treasure from the city to the British trader Captain William Thompson for safekeeping until the Spaniards could secure the country. Instead of waiting in the harbor as they were instructed, Thompson and his crew killed the Viceroy's men and sailed to Cocos where they buried the treasure. Shortly afterwards, they were apprehended by a Spanish warship. All of the crew bar Thompson and his first mate were executed for piracy. The two said they would show the Spaniards where they had hidden the treasure in return for their lives. But after landing on Cocos, they escaped away into the forest. The first claims of treasure buried on the island came from a woman named Mary Welsh, who claimed 350 tons of gold raided from the Spanish galleons had been buried on the island. She had been a member of the pirate crew led by Captain Bennett Graham and was transported to an Australian penal colony for her crimes. She possessed a chart showing where Graham's treasure was supposed to be hidden. On her release, she returned to the island with an expedition, which had no success in finding anything, with the points of reference in the chart having disappeared. The earliest pirate known to use Cocos as a safe haven from the authorities was another Brit, the Englishman Captain Edward Davis, known as a gentleman pirate. He plied a profitable career with tacit royal approval from 1683 to 1702. Another great treasure of gold, silver, and gems was stored on Cocos by a Portuguese buccaneer, Benito Bonito, of the Bloody Sword in the early 19th century. His hoard alone has been estimated by some at $300 million in today's prices. In the same era, the Devonshire treasure, named for the ship that carried it, was bunkered on Cocos by Captain Bennett Graham. Maps purporting to locate the gold were later recovered, but a landmark tree appeared to have been cut down. Treasure was found in May 1856, according to historical reports, by mercenaries fleeing in defeat in Nicaragua. Contemporary letters record that they found a bronze chain in a sea cave, pulled it up and recovered a chest full of gold Spanish doubloons. Another pirate supposed to have buried treasure on the island was the Portuguese Benito Bonito. Although Benito was hunted down and executed, his treasure was never retrieved. Hundreds of attempts to find treasure on the island have failed. Several early expeditions were mounted on the basis of claims by a man named Keating, who was supposed to have befriended Thompson. On one trip, Keating was said to have retrieved gold and jewels left from the treasure. Peruvian adventurer August Gisler lived on the island for most of the period from 1889 until 1908, hunting treasure with the small amount of success of finding six gold coins. Who owns Coco's Island? 
On 6 December 1825, Captain John Clooney's Ross, a Scottish trader, sailing made a brief landing on the island and he returned with his family in 1827 with the intention of commercing a settlement on the islands and the Clooney's Ross family, who became known as the King of Cocos, owned and occupied the islands for more than 150 years. When Burma gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1948, the Cocos Island passed to the new Union of Burma. In 1955, they became a territory of the Commonwealth of Australia, and in 1978, Australia purchased all of the lands, excepting the family home from the Clooney's Ross family. Who lives in these marvelous islands? Nowadays, the only people allowed to live on Cocos Islands are Costa Rican park rangers, who have established two encampments, including one at English Bay. Treasure hunting is now forbidden on Cocos Island, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, because of its unique and exotic marine and land ecosystem, although some adventurers have tried to gain access under the guise of scientific research. It was reported that a group of Costa Rican park rangers were patrolling the island after a storm to locate any damages when they stumbled upon a wooden object that the tide had unearthed. They dug up wooden chests that contained gold and silver coins and bars, jewelry, gem-encrusted candlesticks and crosses, and two golden statues of the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. The value of this treasure was estimated at $200 million, and it was believed to be the lost treasure of Lima. However, it later came out that this story was a hoax and that the treasure of Lima has still never been found. Or, if it has been found, it was kept a secret. Hundreds of attempts have been made to find this treasure and all, as far as we know, have failed. Whatever treasure may still be hidden on Coco's Island remains a mystery.